Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll convert two simple projects into a new Unity input system. So the first one will be this small shooter. I can move my character using the sat keys and I can also shoot using the left mouse button. Also, as you see, the character is always uh, looking at the pointer. So that's what we'll be implementing first. We have to start by installing the package containing new input system. We do that by going to window, then package manager, and then over here in the packages place, we have to switch from in project to Unity registry. Now in the search uh, box over here, we write input system and we have the input system over here. We click this install button uh, at the bottom. Now we have to wait a little bit. Once the new system is installed, we have this nice uh, small pop-up warning us that if we enable the new input system, the old one will be uh, disabled. That means that our game will literally just stop uh, working because we won't be able to control the character. We click yes. Now, because there are um, several changes to the, um, to the project, Unity will restart it, so the first thing we want to do is to save this sun. And now everything is ready for us um, to convert the game. Uh, just before we start, in case you would like to go back to the old input system for some reason, you can do that by going to Edit, Project Settings, Player, and then in the other settings, if you scroll down, over here you will have the active input handling. You can select the new uh, input system, the old one, or you can also make both working at the same time. I'm going to leave it at the mm, new input system. So that's it. And let's get started. Um, as you see, I increased slightly the UI scale um, so you can see everything slightly better. The first thing we have to do is to create new action uh, input action asset we can do that by going to create and then at the very bottom we have this new option input actions we create uh, that one and let's call it game input actions this file is basically what will store all the information about our mapping so everything related to input will be there the information like what keys we use for walking or uh, what keys do we use for jumping and so on in general this type of stuff that we always find in the uh, input manager so we open it and now we see this completely strange window not familiar at all completely different from anything else in unity uh, and the first thing we have to do here is to create a new action map uh, we do that clicking on this plus um, icon, let's call it um, player. But let me tell you two words about um, those action maps. Basically, uh, if you imagine a game like GTA, for example, where your character can walk, but can also ride a bicycle, drive a car and uh, fly a helicopter and fly an airplane. And the key bindings are completely different for those uh, different types of, of movement. Um, this is where the action maps come to play, right? So you can basically um, have different move, for example, actions or different keys assigned to them for different action maps. You can have different uh, button for shooting or you can have just a, a action map specific uh, action. For example, you will have for car, you will have uh, accelerating and braking or for helicopter, you will have um, rising up or rising down things that do not exist for other uh, means of transport. And that's what you would use the action map so obviously again if you would like to have another one you would just create another one a player flying airplane right Play. you get the point and then you can have here action which we call walk and here we have action which we call fly so i think that's clear okay let's start by removing this uh, unnecessary action map so i click on it and then press the delete key on my keyboard and now it's removed. Okay, let's open the player uh, action map. Here I have the walk action. Let's rename it maybe to something like jump. Um, basically, the interesting part about new 
input system is that you can assign multiple uh, bindings to one action. So for example, I can have this jump action and you see I click on the binding and here on the right I have a path. So I open it and then there is this button listen, right? I click on it and can, for example, press the space button and suddenly I have um, space over here and adding it was as easy as that. Now, let's say I want to be able to jump also uh, pressing the X button. I can do that. I just click add binding, add binding, and then over here, once again, I go here, listen and press uh, X, done. So now I have two different uh, bindings. If you would like um, any other kind of device, not only keyboard, um, you see clicking on this small um, arrow over here, you can see all different types of, um, of, of devices. So you can have the gamepads with um, different uh, directions, right? You, with the different keys. Um, just to let you know, uh, the, because Unity's implementation is completely detached from uh, any specific controller, right? So no, no Xbox controller or PlayStation controller or anything like that. The buttons do not have those, uh, you know, typical letters like X, uh, Y or, you know, square and so on. But instead you have the um, directions of the words, right? So you have the East button, North button, South button and West button. So this makes it slightly easier um, to think generically. Then we have joystick, keyboard, mouse, pen, pointer, sensor, touch screen, which is pretty nice. So there is quite a lot of things to choose from. Uh, so yes, if you need any of those, you can find it here. Uh, it also very important if you have it connected to your um, laptop or computer, uh, you can also listen for input. So if I press listen and then click uh, right mouse button, for example, you see here I have right, right mouse button. Okay, so let's have a look again at the jump action. Um, here in the action section, you have the action type setting. And this is probably the setting that you will change uh, the most often. Basically, we have three available uh, types, button, value, and pass through. Button should be used for the um, actions that are trigger, triggered by an event. So things like, uh, you know, key press or uh, click of the mouse button or tap on the screen, and this type of things that happen once, let's say. Uh, and those are great for things like jumping, shooting, and so on, so on. On the other hand, value and pass through are used rather for the continuous input. So things like movement. Uh, there is one big difference between them. Uh, we'll get there uh, in a moment. But first, let's create new action. So I'm clicking on this plus icon and call the action walk. Let's now change its action type from button to value. And suddenly we have this uh, new field here, control type. The control type is basically a return type that will be given to us when we try to access this particular action in code. Uh, for button, it is a little bit more interesting. So I'm a little bit simplifying here, but a button is a great example because on one hand, we would expect Boolean values, right? So uh, something like was pressed uh, or, or things like that. And yes, it is there, but also we can get a different value by creating different type of binding. So here you see, I'm clicking the um, add binding. And as you remember, the jump was of the button type. And even though I can just add binding, like we've done it here, I can also add positive negative binding. And this will create like one dimensional axis. So, you know, like horizontal axis or vertical axis that we know from the um, old input manager. Uh, so we could, uh, you know, for jump, it doesn't make much sense, but let's say a directional jump or whatever, right? And then negative could be A and positive could be D. And what would happen then? Basically, when we click on the uh, binding itself, not on the actual keys, we can see um, different values, right? So what we'll get when certain key is pressed. So we'll get minus one for A and one for D, right? This is pretty interesting um, because if you, you can select which you prefer 
um, to be stronger. So for example, if you press both at the same time, which should be uh, the one taken into consideration. Awesome. So let's just remove it and let's get back um, to our walk. Now we can change the control type to, for example, vector two. This is amazing for uh, top down and this is what we actually need, right? Because our our character can uh, walk in all the directions. So let's select vector two. And now when I create the binding, you see I have an up, down, left, right composite, which is fantastic because I can just do um, set configuration. Let's just remove this one. And here I can set up all the keys for sat. So now for the same uh, thing, for the same action, I can also have another set of settings. So for example, arrows. And here, arrow, down, left, and right. Okay, we have two different set of bindings for the walk action. And this is amazing because this will allow us to um, discuss the differences between the value and pass-through uh, types. Basically, the for the value action type, whichever input is stronger, this one will be taken into consideration. So for example, if you have a gamepad and you have two sticks and you will move one a little bit to the left, and then the other one, uh, like completely to the right, the character will start obviously moving um, to the left a little bit because you used the left, uh, moved the first stick to the left. But as soon as you move it, uh, as soon as you move the other one to the right to the very end, the character will start moving right because that's the stronger input. Uh, when when the action type is pass through, the behavior is um, different. What happens then, the most recent input um, is taken into consideration. And for, for a gamepad, this might be a little bit problematic because as you know, uh, gamepads are um, analog and the values constantly change. So there is like a flickering of values uh, constantly. So um, if you have one and the other one, then you know you will just have a one huge mess of values and, and, and yeah, bad things happening. Um, but for example, for the um, keys on the keyboard, this would be perfectly fine because basically the one that was press pressed later would be the one taken into consideration. Okay, so we have the walk um, action set up. Let's just rename the jump to shoot. Let's maybe remove um, those uh, two bindings, create a new one and just have a look for um, mouse and then left button. Great. So we have it here. Now, very important thing. Um, whenever you make changes to the um, input action asset, you have to save it. Here's the button. If you forget that, nothing will change. You will be wondering what happened. And this is uh, the thing that people forget the most often. Um, you can also enable autosave, but this is not recommended um, because it will lag your editor a little bit because basically in a moment it will auto-generate a C-sharp script. And basically any change you make here triggers the new generation of the, um, of the script if the autosave is enabled. So here we can close um, this window for now. And here we click on the game input uh, actions. And over here, you see we have this checkbox generate C sharp class. I click on that and click apply. And suddenly you see extra uh, file was generated. That's file containing all the informations that we put um, there inside our game input actions file. You don't have to know what's there. If you're interested in it, you can just mm, go th through it and have a look. But I cannot think of a situation when you would have to actually go there and modify it yourself. Um, you just use it as a uh, script provided to, do to you no rather than modify it directly. Okay, okay. So as you see, I rescaled back my um, editor. That's because we are getting back to code. Now, that's 
my uh, player script. It's pretty ugly, um, but it's simple, and that's important because this will be uh, nice and easy to replace. Um, here we have a gathering input, right? So we have uh, we create a new vector too and get there the horizontal axis and vertical axis and that gives us the um, input in both directions. Then here we have part which is responsible for um, basically turning the, turning the character in the um, where, where the pointer is, right? So here um, quite obviously in those mouse utils we'll have to get the mouse position. So that's the second place uh, which we'll have to modify. And then let's get back to the player script. Obviously we have our fire action. So those are the three things we'll need to do. Um, in general, I do not recommend to use here directly the action uh, file, right? The auto-generated file. I always tend and prefer to do a wrapper around it because this way, if any deals of the implementation change or you want to change something, you can, um, you don't have to modify all the classes that use that input, but rather you can, you can modify only the input provider. So let's create a new class. Let's call it input provider. Yay. Now, as you see, it doesn't um, extend the mono behavior. It doesn't have to. The thing that it will use will be private and the type will be, we have to find our auto-generated file. The name is game input actions. So game input actions input. That's the variable that will store it. Um, then actually I can just create it here. Amazing. That automatically gives us access to those uh, input actions inside um, this particular class. Now I need a method that will allow me to um, get the input um, for movement, right? So uh, it will return the vector two and it will be called um, movement input. I need to import the um, Unity Engine class. Fantastic namespace, sorry. Yep. And now what we need to do? We need to get to the input. Then on the input, we have our um, different mappings. So over here, we have the player actions. Player, awesome. Then we click and over here you see we have our shoot and walk. So I'm interested in walk. Then what I need to do is to read value and I need to provide its uh, return type because obviously uh, we had to select manually what type we want. So Unity is not um, smart enough to let uh, to 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 kind of communicate to the script which one we have selected. So we have to do it ourselves. Now we have it here and we just return it. And this is seriously as easy as that. Unfortunately for shooting, it will be a little bit harder, um, but that comes with a big reward of using events. Um, so the difference between old and new input system uh, is that the old one relied heavily on checking every frame um, if certain action occurred like here, right? So I have this if and it is evaluated every single frame. With the new input provider or the new input system, uh, what we do instead, we register an action on an event. Um, if you don't know anything about events, you can check uh, my tutorial. It will appear somewhere there. Um, but yes, we'll have to do that. So first thing we have to do uh, is to expose the event for shooting um, to other classes from the input provider. So we can do that. That will be a little bit strange. So I'm sure you know that you can create custom access accessors for uh, things like, uh, so for example, if you would have uh, just public float x, 
um, x, then you could do get, right, and then just to return, I don't know, five, whatever, right? And um, this is pretty obvious. You can do that for get, you can create set um, for this value too, and setter will set some values and so on and so on. For events, it is slightly different because you don't have the get uh, and um, uh, you don't have the get and set, but rather you have add the action and remove action. So over here, what we do, we have action of the type callback context. Mm. Let me tell you in a second how I know that. So let's call it first shoot. Perfor performed. I hope I didn't spell, misspell it. Okay, import missing reference. This one will be, I'm sorry, callback context. Beautiful. And um, now, how I knew uh, what is the type over here? That's because if we look at our input, then player uh, mapping, then we go to shoot, and then we uh, add dot, we see in autocomplete that there are three different actions cancelled which is obviously happening when we um, cancel the action so release the key performed which means when the um, action was completed successfully we'll get to that in a second and then started when the action started so when we pressed the button mm, it may sound strange to have performed cancelled and started for a thing like pre uh, button press but it turns out that one thing we did not have a look into, um, this will be a little bit small now because I haven't scaled the UI, but I hope you see it uh, clearly. Um, basically over here, we have something called interactions, right? So we can add a new interaction and you see we have hold, multi-tap, press, slow tap, tap. So if we select, for example, hold, we can add the action hold to it and we can require certain uh, time, right? So we can, for example, specify that we require um, the button to be pressed for one second. And then if we have a look here, right, in our, in, in our events, basically the three actions we have. So the started will be when the player starts pressing the button. The performed will be when the action actually happens. So when we hold the button for one second and cancelled obviously if we um, decided to leave the button before uh, the time passed so that's why we have those events over here let me just get back there for a second so those are interactions but there is one more interesting thing and those are processors so sometimes you may want to do something with a result um, of a um, of the input, right? So for example, if you have a gamepad, the thing that is quite common is controlling the, the dead zone. So basically sometimes when your um, stick is at zero position, it actually has a value and that causes a strange flickering. And basically you can use over here, there is not for, not for the button one, but for a value, you see processor, you have a stick dead zone and then you can set um, the dead zones there. There, is, there are also things for scaling, um, for normalizing, inverting, and so on and so on. Um, it is really worth uh, looking into it. I think those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, interesting thing, you can also write your own processors, but this is a little bit out of scope of this um, tutorial. Uh, but this is also pretty, pretty interesting that there is option like that. Now let's get back to our um, actions. So as I said, if we have a look at those actions, we see they are of type action callback context. So we can remove that. We have this and we need to allow registering and removing actions from it. So here we have input, player mapping, shoot action, and we are interested in per performed. And we just want to add whatever somebody wants to register there. Then we also, what well, I missed the event keyword here. And then the same thing for remove. So we can just copy paste it here and just do minus. Yay, fantastic. So just to let you know what will happen, basically now 
in our uh, player you will be able to subscribe to that particular event and do something when the shoot was performed. You don't have to remember which event was there, you don't have, um, because we've done that, only this one particular is exposed for you. So there is no mess, there is uh, the impl underlying implementation can change and this will stay nicely the way it is. So you will have not to, you, you will not have to make many changes in the code. Okay, so it's time to actually put our input um, provider inside the player class. For that, let's move to our player script. First thing we have to do is to make somehow um, the input provider available from the player class. So for that, we can create a private variable of type input provider, input provider, and then on enable, we can create the instance. So over here, new provider, fantastic. Also here, we will be able to register the um, shooting, but for that, we have to do small modifications. So let's first remove it from the update method. And now, as we remember, our input provider um, requires for the shoot performed one parameter, which is callback context. So I'm going to the player over here I'm just adding the callback context of the input um, action. And now I just name it context. Now we don't need to use that, um, but obviously if we would like to get some data from it, that would be available for us now. So we can now register the um, shoot action. So input provider shoot performed because we expose it, so we have access. Now let's add the action and the action is shoot. Also on the disable, we can remove that action. So input provider shoot performed and we can remove it just to keep everything clear. Fantastic. So we have shooting. Now um, for input, uh, for movement input, it is a little bit easier. So we can just get rid of that because our mm, method in the input provider returns already um, the input for us. So the vector two for us. Here in the rigid body input normalized, we can just do input provider dot movement input. The nice thing is that this vector is already normalized for us. This is awesome. Okie dokie. So the last thing we have to uh, modify is actually in the mouse uh, utils. We have to use new way of getting the uh, mouse position. Okay, so the first thing is we have to add it to our um, game input actions. So I opened the file in the actions. I'm adding new action and call it mouse position. Then because it is continuous action, I'm changing it to value type. Then from the control type, I select vector two because we want to the position. In the binding and path, I'm selecting the mouse and position. Now, of course, we cannot forget to click the save asset button. And as you see, the um, C sharp script is already regenerating for us. Now I go back to the script and I need to add it in the input provider. So public vector to mouse position return. Uh, sorry, input player uh, mouse position read value and also vector two. Awesome. So we have the mouse position. And now we have to pass it to the mouse utils. So for that, first, we need to create a private variable to start the input provider. Input provider and we create straight away new instance. We get it. And over here, we use the mouse position. Ah, you see this method is static. 
and this also has to be static. Okay, is it everything over here? That's all. Now, so looks like we have everything added. We have our movement input, we have our mouse position, and we have our shooting over here. But now, when we start the game, we'll realize that our input is not working at all. And why is that? Um, there is one strange thing which we have to do, um, and that's because we can use different actions, different action maps and so on. So we have to actually tell Unity which ones we want to enable. So in our input provider, let's create a class. Uh, sorry, let's get, create a method, enable, which enables all the um, actions we need. So here we have input. First one will be the walk, enable. Then we do the same for shoot and we do the same for mouse position and we also want to have the possibility to disable them so public void disable and we can also just paste them here and whoops wrong one too fast disable them That actually makes me think that maybe this should be static because we want to share one um, game input actions among all um, of our game objects. We not always want to, but in this case, uh, we want them to share it. So we can enable and disable all of them in one place. So inside my player, player on enable, I can also um, enable the input provider, so enable and then disable on, dis uh, on disable. And now everything is working exactly the way we expect it to work. Okay, so now very quickly let's um, upgrade another project. This time not so much talking. Okay, so here I have this simple setup where my character is walking to the sides and can jump when I press the space button. Let's convert it to a new input system. I'm going to the package manager and from the um, Unity registry I'm setting, selecting the input system and installing it. Once the package is installed I accept that the old um, input system will be disabled and that my Unity uh, project has to be restarted. And here we are. Now I need to create the um, input action asset. It's over here. Game input actions. I open it. Create my action map. I click new action, change its name to walk, change the action type from button to value and to um, access. Then in no bindings I'm actually removing it. Then I'm adding new bindings for positive negative binding. And that will be for set keys where negative will be A and positive will be D. Similar one for arrows where the negative will be left arrow and the positive will be right arrow. Awesome. Then I'm adding another action. This time of type button called jump. And this time there will be only one binding and that will be space. I save it. Exit the window and on the game input. Uh, actions input action asset I check this checkbox generate C sharp class and apply 
at this moment the script is generated for me and now this time let's skip the input provider just so you can see how this could be done without the input provider so I open my player script and first of course I need the reference to my uh, input actions so I create a variable for that game input actions input okay and for uh, input I have here this mm, nice method for the horizontal input I can just do input and uh, now player I think how did I call it let me just double check so here here ah, I didn't name it player okay save asset and now it will be here player then walk then uh, read value as float awesome for jump it will be a little bit harder again because we use the um, t -t 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 -t, what we use events so we remove it here and in uh, the jump method we need to first check inside of it if our character is grounded and only then allow to jump and then also we need to require the callback context awesome so that's here we don't need that anymore so apply jump will not be needed so we can remove it also from update and now we need to register jump and enable disable um, the input actions so private void on enable first what we want to do did I create the instance there now so input first let's create the um, instance of the game input actions then here let's um, register the jump so here we have input player jump performed and the action will be the jump to do not forget it straight away let's disable it on disable we copy paste it at minus here and the only thing that is left is to do input um, t -d 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 player walk enable input player jump enable and also disable those ones and if I haven't forgotten anything that should be it um, I have yes I do get some so you see I missed something I missed a place where I'm using the um, input access so what I can do here I can do I can copy um, the value which stores my float and use it instead now save let's just double check if I don't have any other reference to the input class nope everything looks all right so this time it should be working let's just clear the console and start the game and everything works as expected I hope you learned something useful have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.